Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 21, Lesson 22. In studying this chapter, one, to explore the warnings that Paul received as he journeyed to Jerusalem, two, to review the arrival of Paul in Jerusalem, three, to examine Paul's arrest in the temple, and four, to observe Paul's request to address the violent mob as he entered the barracks. Paul left the Ephesian elders at Miletus. Paul, Luke, and the other traveling companions sailed from Miletus to Cos. From Cos they sailed to Rhodes, and then on to Patera. At Patera they caught a ship to Tyre of Phoenicia. The ship passed to the south of the island of Cyprus. Acts 21, 1-3 When it happened that we had parted from them and had set sail, we came with a straight course to Cos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patera. Having found a ship crossing over to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we came in sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left hand, we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unload her cargo. Upon arrival in Tyre, they found the disciples and remained with them seven days. The Spirit had indicated to the disciples what awaited Paul in Jerusalem. They told Paul not to go to Jerusalem. Paul continued, the disciples accompanied him outside the city, and they knelt and prayed on the shore. Paul and his companions boarded the ship and departed. Acts 21, 4-6 Having found disciples, we stayed there seven days. These said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. When it happened that we had accomplished the days, we departed and went on our journey. They all, with wives and children, brought us on our way until we were out of the city. Kneeling down on the beach, we prayed. After saying goodbye to each other, we went on board the ship, and they returned home again. They sailed from Tyre to Ptolemus. They greeted the brethren there and remained one day. They then went to Caesarea. Paul and his companions went to Philip's house. He was one of the seven. CF Acts 6. Philip had four virgin daughters. They prophesied. Acts 21, 7-9. through 9. When we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Ptolemus. We greeted the brothers and stayed with them one day. On the next day, we, who were Paul's companions, departed and came to Caesarea. We entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist, who was one of the seven and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. The prophet Agabus came down from Judea. He took Paul's belt and bound his own hands and feet. This was to indicate that Paul would be bound and delivered to the Gentiles in Jerusalem, as the Holy Spirit revealed. Both his traveling companions and those in Caesarea pleaded with Paul not to go to Jerusalem. Acts 21, 10-12 As we stayed there some days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming to us and taking Paul's belt, he bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, So will the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt, and will deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When we heard these things, both we and they of that place begged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 21.13 NKJV They then ceased pleading with Paul and asked that the will of the Lord be done. Acts 21.13-14 Then Paul answered, What are you doing weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The Lord's will be done. Paul and his companions proceeded to Jerusalem. They were accompanied by some of the disciples from Caesarea. They were to lodge with Manson of Cyprus, who was an early disciple. They then met with the Jerusalem brethren, who met them gladly. Acts 21, 15-17 after these days we took up our baggage and went up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea also went with us, bringing one Manson of Cyprus, an early disciple, with whom we would stay. When we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. The next day, Paul and his companions met with James and the elders to give a description of the things which God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. The brethren glorified the Lord upon hearing these things. Acts 21, 18-20 The day following, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. When he had greeted them, he reported one by one 
the things which God had worked among the Gentiles through his ministry. They, when they heard it, glorified God. They said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed, and they are all zealous for the law. James and the elders then expounded to Paul the problem he faced. Many myriads of Jews had believed, and they were zealous for the law. They had been informed that Paul taught Jews, living among the Gentiles, to forsake Moses, that is, not to circumcise their children, nor to keep the customs. They expected these Jewish believers to learn that Paul was in Jerusalem. Acts 21, 21-22 They have been informed about you, that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What then? The assembly must certainly meet, for they will hear that you have come. James and the elders gave Paul a plan. He should accompany the four men who had taken a vow, purify himself, pay their expenses in an effort to show that Paul kept the law, customs as a Jew. They reiterated, CF Acts 15, that the believing Gentiles were not subject to the law. Acts 21, 23 through 25. Therefore do what we tell you. We have four men who have taken a vow. Take them and purify yourself with them and pay their expenses for them that they may shave their heads. Then all will know that there is no truth in the things that they have been informed about you, but that you yourself also walk keeping the law. But concerning the Gentiles who believe, we have written our decision that they should observe no such thing, except that they should keep themselves from food offered to idols, from blood, from strangled things, and from sexual immorality.